President Trump's efforts against illegal immigration continue to provoke defiance from some Democratic lawmakers in the states. Governor Dan Malloy of Connecticut has told state police they don't have to comply with requests from ICE to hold illegal immigrants for deportation, saying that his state has no obligation to cooperate in the law and in the enforcement of federal immigration laws. Governor Malloy joins us now. Governor, thanks a lot for coming on. Sure. Great to so be with you. So we promoted this segment earlier today, and I got a ton of email from your constituents in Connecticut, some I know, some I don't know, saying the same thing, which is the state is a fiscal wreck. It's massively in debt. The capital city is on the verge of bankruptcy. We're laying off teachers. Why is the governor focusing on this? How does this improve our lives? No, the governor focuses on everything. We've created 85,000 jobs uh, in the last few years. Uh, and as I was telling you off, off the TV, uh, I inherited a mess that my predecessors set up by giving away benefits and not funding the long-term obligations. Right. So, you know, you dig yourself out of these things uh, slowly. Uh, Connecticut com complies with the law. And, and there are federal laws that the federal uh, authorities should enforce. And there state laws that the state authorities should, should enforce. Uh, we want bad guys off the street. We want bad guys uh, sent home. Uh, that, that's not the disagreement. The disagreement is the president can't order us to do uh, federal work. Uh, quite frankly, the federal government should do its own job and get it done. Uh, and uh, we're not standing in the way of that happening. So well, I'll get to the, the, the federalism part of this in a minute, but just back to the original question. So I don't think you're responsible for all of Connecticut's ills. I don't think anybody yeah, no. thinks that, but they have gotten worse since you've been governor, and, and one way to kind of crystallize it is that GE left after many years in your state, went to Massachusetts, not considered necessarily a hospitable place for business, but they did. Well, let, let me stop you for a minute. Yeah. GE moved 200 jobs from Connecticut yeah. for $160 million. Not a big deal? No, no, it's a, it's a big deal. That, that oh, one okay. state would pay $160 million for 200 jobs is a big deal. If I had paid $160 million for 200 jobs, uh, the same people who sent you notes... Uh, so what, what are you case, saying exactly? It was unfair? No, I'm, I'm just saying that they made a, a business decision that, that they wanted to, to have these 200 people move from our state. We have thousands of employees, uh, GE employees. In fact, we have more GE employees in Connecticut right now than the day I got elected So you're governor. saying that GE moving and the head of GE, Jeff Immelt, saying we're going to a place that shares our aspirations, i.e. Massachusetts, is not a big deal. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying it's... I, I, we would certainly prefer that they stay, but, but how do you compete with a state that's going to pay $160 million to, to move the equivalent of 200 jobs? So let me go back to what I said, and maybe you didn't hear me. Um, the reality is that we have more GE jobs in Connecticut today uh, than we did the day I was elected. Okay, I guess that's kind of the point, though. When you said, how do you compete, Connecticut isn't competing. And that's, that's the concern of some of your constituents. Not all Republicans are right wingers. It's a pretty democratic state. People saying, holy smokes, a $1.7 billion budget deficit. I'm not saying it's all your fault, but it's set to rise. Laying off teachers. How does your action today make the lives of taxpaying Connecticut residents better? That's well, the obvious question. We have not laid off teachers, so I don't know where you're getting that. Really? Problem. From the Hartford Current, which said that Hartford, the city of Hartford, for example, is about to lay off 200 teachers under the current budget. The, the city is selling junk bonds. I mean, it's like going under, as you know. I was a mayor for 14 years, right? Tri AAA rated, uh, one of the lowest crime rates in America, uh, investing in schools and housing. Uh, we, we know how to do those things. I'm not the mayor of, of Hartford. There is a new mayor of Hartford. It's your capital city, though. Country. So, I mean, it's. You know, it's not insignificant oh, no, that it's, it's in trouble. Oh, it's, it's, it's certainly not insignificant. That's why the progress that's being made now with lower crime, now with more housing opportunities, uh, are very important. And we need to continue to make those kinds so of improvements. So you're saying... But let me go back to the, to, to, the, okay. to the point. What you're arguing is that we should do something that we're not required to do, that we should expend state resources doing a federal job and then at the same time, you're saying, well, why are you saying you don't want to do that? You shouldn't be having that fight. You should be doing other things. What I'm saying is, in a world of endless possibilities, you could be spending a finite amount of time you have every day working. People in the state are worried because clearly it's in trouble. When you have a $1.7 billion deficit, I think it's fair for them to ask, how will making it easier for people here legally to stay in our state, how does that improve our lives? It's a simple question. So when I was the first uh, Democrat elected governor in 24 years, uh, I was handed a state that had a $7 billion, $6.7 billion okay. deficit. Um, and uh, deficits are based on projection of expenses. Uh, I'm growing the state at substantial, actually less than half of my three predecessors per year. So, and but let, let me just finish okay. one thing. And the money that we're spending in addition uh, is actually to pay the debts that weren't paid by my predecessors. So when they were giving away dollar copays, 
uh, or allowing people to, to retire as very young people, um, they were at the same time not putting the money in the, in the account to pay for that on a long-term basis. So what we have needed to do and what we are doing, for instance, I'm the 88th governor of the state of Connecticut. I'm the first governor to fully fund the uh, long-term obligations actuarially, and we've cut those uh, long-term obligations by $21.5 billion. That's great, but then if things are getting better with your deficit, the projections that I just read suggest it's about to get bigger from 1.7 to 1.9. Without getting into the weeds too much, is that not true? No, that's it's not true. It's not true. Okay. So, I mean, look, I'm not blaming you for everything that's wrong with your state because it's clearly not your fault. Right. I'm just asking for the fourth time, and I'll give up after this, does making it easier for legal aliens to stay in the state of Connecticut, which undoubtedly you are doing, improve the lives of the citizens of Connecticut and the taxpayers of Connecticut who are trying to pay off $1.7 billion I, in deficit? I, I, I'm just going to challenge you for, yeah, yeah, for a minute uh, and, and respectfully. We're not doing anything to make it easier for anyone to stay in our are. state. Uh, the, the federal government has its obligations. We should not be expending local dollars, state dollars, to do the federal government's job. At, at the same time... Well, are you serious? What, what did this cost you to issue this order today? Uh, you know, uh, it's totally, totally free. Uh, no, uh, uh, actually, much of what is in that order that went out uh, yesterday, and actually it's an advisory, um, was actually done three years ago by our legislature, a unanimous vote, Republicans and Democrats, uh, passing a law that says that's how we're going to treat this case. See, I, I guess what I find a little confusing... No, no, but wait a minute. But okay. you're, so you're asking so, me... Are, are you, you saying you're doing this to save but, money? Is that it? No, no. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is that Connecticut has decided how to handle this issue uh, in the state of Connecticut. By a unanimous vote, Republicans and Democrats in both houses all voted for a law that says that we will cooperate with ICE under certain circumstances and we will not cooperate with them to do their job uh, when they should be doing their job. It's a little strange, though, that almost at exactly the moment you're making making this argument that it's really a federal responsibility, you're, you're, you're invoking federalism. You're saying, you know, the states have it. Their Something duties. you believe in. Uh, I, guess. I guess. I'm losing track of who believes in what, though, because at almost exactly the same time, you issue a statement, in fact, I think yesterday, or today, attacking the White House for letting states decide about transgender bathrooms. It seems like situational federalism. No, to no, me. I, I, listen, what I'm saying is that they made a mistake. Um, and that. But they're saying it's a state's issue. They're making exactly the same case that you're making about these immigration I, I laws, but you're saying, no, it's, it's wrong when I they make think, that case? I don't think discrimination or bigotry are, are state issues. We, we have laws. Uh, those laws are intended to protect people, uh, uh, and I think that they're, they're, they have uh, committed a mistake. What are you saying? That any, anybody who's uncomfortable with the idea of the federal government imposing national guidelines on bathrooms for transgender students is a bigot? No, I'm not saying anyone who does that. I, I, what I'm saying is it's a mistake. Uh, but you, well, you just said bigotry is not a local or state or a federal issue. Discrimination. Is it? Would, would so you, you think would, that's discrimination? You, yeah, yeah, I do. So you think that the White House saying the states should decide is an act of discrimination? No, I think what, 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 are, I'm losing what track. they have said. Well, what did they say exactly? M my reading of it, and you're the one who issued the response to right. it, was... We're throwing it back to the states for them to decide. And you just use the term bigotry and discrimination to describe that. And I'm wondering how exactly that's right. Because why should someone um, be required to use a facility that they're no longer equipped to, to use because it was on their birth certificate? Why should someone who uh, identifies as, as uh, having uh, changed their sex be required to make you happy uh, because their birth certificate so letting, says that just, they I were, just want to clarify because we're yeah. almost out of time. Letting the states make these decisions as you believe believe they should in the case of immigration policy is an act of discrimination. Is that, is that no, what you're no, saying? No, I think uh, what I'm saying is the treatment of transgender individuals uh, and singling them out and saying that we will no longer support their rights or respect their differences is a mistake. Governor, thanks for joining us. Thank you.